everybody. Douglas V. Gibbs here, and let's talk about the word national and nationalism and nation versus federalism or federal. Founding fathers, when they wrote the Constitution, what they did was they created something called federalism, which really hadn't existed before. Federalism is based on authorities, and the Constitution is based on a proper distribution of power. And so we don't want too much power to belong to any one part of government. In a national government or a nationalistic system, the, there is a hierarchy and the national government is at the top. It's at the top of the food chain. So whatever it says, whatever it means, whatever they want, that's what happens because they're in control. It's the ruling power. The federal government, however, was not designed to be a ruling power. It was designed to be a federal government because our country is not a nation. It's a federation of states. It's a union of states that have come together, and we have a federal government that was created by the Constitution. Therefore, when we talk about the Constitution, because we are looking at it from a federalism point of view, not a nationalism point of view, the uh, question has always got to be, well, what is the authority? Where does the authority lie? Uh, the reason why this uh, came up uh, for this video is because I had a conversation with a friend of mine who's debating someone online over gun laws. And the gentleman says, well, uh, states are making gun laws. They're violating the Second Amendment. Not necessarily. It, uh, and it says, well, they can't violate the Constitution. And, you know, it says shall not be infringed. But who is that amendment talking to? It comes down to authority. In the preamble of the Bill of Rights, it says that the purpose of the Bill of Rights is prevent misconstruction or abuse of its powers. Well, who's the it? The it is the federal government. So the purpose of the Bill of Rights originally, and even the most um, progressive historian will agree that originally the Founding Fathers intended for the Bill of Rights only to apply to the federal government. This is not to say that the states can stomp all over your rights. Your rights are your rights. You naturally have them. But the Bill of Rights was written to, in the language it was used to the federal government, saying, hey, federal government, our rights is absolutely none of your business. Now, the states can make some laws regarding our rights because they need to take care of the internal order and, and prosperity of their state. And so you may have a right, for example, to go through an intersection. But a stoplight is put in so that we can go through that intersection in an orderly manner. Your right's not taken away. There's a law that's necessary on the book so that you can take care of that right. Uh, if you believe that the Second Amendment shall not be infringed, applies also to the states, so that means then you believe that the states can have absolutely no gun laws. Well, then who's to make the law saying that someone that's nine years old, say, can't go to the gun store to buy a gun or a three-year-old or should someone who has committed a crime a felony a violent felony be allowed to buy a gun should there be some restrictions or complete restrictions or partial restrictions well any of that would violate shall not be infringed and you can't have it both ways either shall not be infringed applies to states or it doesn't Either every single state gun law would be unconstitutional, or none of them would be. Shall not be infringed. Shall not be infringed means that every single federal gun law, including background checks, is unconstitutional. I'm not saying there shouldn't be background checks. I'm saying the federal government can't do it. It's up to each state. We'll say, Doug, you know, uh, you tell the federal government that all gun laws are unconstitutional, so you can just have a nuclear bomb. No, I'm not saying that. There can be a law against me having a nuclear bomb. It's just that the federal government can't make that law. Because when it comes to the federalism point of view, it depends. Where does the authority lie? The authority, when it comes to the Second Amendment, is given to the states. And the uh, federal government is told, you shall not infringe. Period. So we don't have a national government. We have a federal government. And, if, and another evident, piece of evidence, if we want to logically you know, uh, draw this out here is if the Constitution was absolute in the sense of authorities 
uh, uh, giving the federal government absolute power, nationalism. It's a national government, and the states must abide by every single word in the U.S. Constitution. Then why would they have state constitutions? And if the Second Amendment applies to all states, and they shall ha shall not be infringed, that means they can make no laws regarding guns, then why is it that there's gun language in 49 of the 50 state constitutions that mirrors or is uh, near what the Second Amendment says? It wouldn't be necessary. They wouldn't have put it in the state constitution if the Second Amendment applied to the state. So obviously, it doesn't. Now, once again... Don't get nervous. I'm not saying the states to stop all of your rights. You have the right to keep and bear arms. And the state's only supposed to make necessary laws. Remember, the delegates that wrote all of this stuff came from the states. They weren't worried about themselves. They were worried about this federal government. So they were creating a system that would create a federal government to handle the things it needed to handle. External issues, war, trade, the border, maritime law, and so on and so forth but it left all the other authorities to the states. And in Federalist 45, James Madison is clear. It says in Federalist 45 that the powers of the federal government are few and defined, and, and the powers given to the states are numerous and indefinite. That the powers given to the federal government are on external issues such as war and trade, commerce with, other, with foreign nations, but the Internal issues, the states, it's you know the internal prosperity and, and order of their state and the life, liberty, and property of its citizens. So life, liberty, property, your rights. States can make laws regarding your rights. They're not supposed to go too far. They only, only can make necessary laws because the fact is, if, for example, I violate your right, there's got to be a law somewhere to punish me for violating your right. I have the right to swing my arms, but I don't have the right to punch you in the nose. You have the right not to be punched in the nose. If that right is violated because I was not responsible with my right to swing my arms, somebody's got to make those laws and somebody's got to enforce them, and the federal government doesn't have the authority, according to the Constitution. Therefore, it falls on your states, your local government, your county, your city, all falls under your state constitution. So we don't have a national government. We have a federal government. And you know what? It's funny because... The word citizen and the word national are being flipped. Uh, and, and there's a lot of, even allies, people I consider friends and allies, are falling for these ideas, these theories out there that the word national, you know, if you're a, say, sovereign national, well, what is, you know, then that's a good thing. Well, the word national means that you're a member of a nation. And if you're a member of a nation, that means you're under an overpowering ruling government that uh, has all the authority. It rules over you. I don't want to be a national. I want to be a citizen. If you're a citizen and you are a member of a, a democracy or a republic, in our case, a republic, if you are a national, then you are not a citizen. You are a subject. And subjects fall under the jurisdiction and authority of an overpowerful government. But if you're a citizen, you don't serve the government. The government's supposed to serve you. If you're a citizen, the citizen is the highest ranking political office in a country. And therefore, you have responsibilities as a citizen. Not that we, not that we practice those responsibilities in today's society. And there is a lot more to being a citizen than what we seem to know. Being a citizen is a good thing. Being a national is not. Nationalism is, you know, drove me nuts when, uh, President Trump was, you know, reaching popularity at all. Those, those nationalistic nationalism. Everybody tried to just embrace it to kind of, you know, poke uh, the uh, opposition in the eye. And because they, they were using the word nationalism because they believed it meant uh, oh, oh, too much love for your system, you know, the, the master race kind of thinking, the, the white supremacist kind of thinking, things like that. No, nationalism means that there's a strong ruling government. And I, I disagree with that. And I don't think the federal government is supposed to be that because the Constitution uses federalism. It comes down to authorities. The federal government doesn't have all authority. It, does not, it is not supreme over the states on all issues. If you go to Article 6, what does it say? This Constitution and the laws of the United States main pursuance thereof. And all treaties made or shall be made are the supreme law of the land. 
So a, a federal law has to be made in pursuance thereof. They have to be authorized. If they're not authorized, it's not the supreme law of the land, and therefore a state can make a law contrary because the federal government's not a national government. It's not supreme across the board. It is only supreme on, on the issues that it has been authorized to be you know, and so with Doug, you know, the Constitution is an antiquated document and the federal government needs more authorities. Then propose an amendment. Constitution can be changed. Authorities can be added. Rather than allowing the federal government just to take these authorities and then claim, hey, we're national, let's go through the process. Because, see, in the process of proposing an amendment, what happens? The states must ratify it. Why? Because the states are the parties to the contract, the Constitution, that created the federal government. They're the parents. And so if the federal government is to do anything, it's supposed to get the permission of the states. That's why it takes three quarters of states to ratify an amendment. And we have other mechanisms in our republic that no longer exist because they've dismantled them. They've neutralized these mechanisms. That also allowed the state legislatures to have oversight over the federal government. In fact, Prior to the 16th Amendment, the 17th Amendment, uh, the Federal Reserve, and a number of other things that have happened in history, including Andrew Jackson's change to the Electoral College, there was nothing the federal government could do without the, le the state legislatures approving of it, including their budget. All of that was in place. Now we have a federal government that says, well, we're a national government. Now, I do know that the word national and nation did get used by the founders every once in a while. Even though they never intended this to be a national system, we're not really a nation, we're a federation of states, federal government. I do realize that sometimes that word will be used because, unfortunately, in our language, the word national and nation seems to be used as if it's a catch-all for all countries. But when you really break down the language, it isn't. It's not supposed to be. So when we talk about nationalism and nations and being a national, just be aware that our Constitution does not use the word national or nation or nationalism. In fact, nationalism, just like democracy, does not appear anywhere in the Declaration of Independence or the United States Constitution because this country is supposed to be a constitutional republic. Unfortunately, over time, the enemy has been thorough. And while our Constitution says we're a constitutional republic, the world says, the opposition says, and it's starting to feel like we are a democracy and a nation of nationalism with a national government that rules over everything. And that's a violation of the United States Constitution. All right, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Subscribe down below. Hit the bell if you want notifications. And of course, if you want to, you can also contribute to my efforts. Go to douglasvgibbs.com or politicalpistachio.com. Find the donate button. You can also join my email list. Uh, whenever I put out a video like this, I send out an email letting everybody know that I did. And you can do that also at douglasvgibbs.com or politicalpistachio.com. Politicalpistachio.com on the right sidebar, you just Scroll down or right below the donate button is a maroon colored button that says join our email list. Click that, fill out the information, and you'll start getting emails from me. Reminding you not only of videos, but articles I write, and the classes I do, which has links to the handouts, which you can also read and learn if you can't make the classes. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. United we stand. Combined we kick butt. God bless America, my friends. God bless you. We'll see you next time.